When you press B to activate the Paint Bucket tool, the Materials window automatically appears. On the PC it looks a bit different, and on the Mac it's called Colors. These are color pickers across here that are part of the operating system. You'll find these in many different applications. SketchUp has its own custom color picker represented by this brick. I have third-party color pickers installed over here that you won't see on a default Mac install. But you can use any of the pickers to select a color. You need to use the SketchUp color picker in order to create a texture that is based on pixels, and I'll get into that later. Right here we have the home symbol which takes us automatically to the colors in model. Right now we're looking at the default color represented here by this square with a diagonal. This represents the front and back colors as defined in the style. I'll just open the styles window and show you that. I'll edit the current style, go to the face level, and I can click front color right here, and then I can go ahead and select a color, and I'll just use this picker to do so. You can see that all the objects change because they all have the default material assigned. If I go back to the SketchUp color picker, you'll see that this color has changed here. So this is a one-to-one -one mapping between here and what you see in the style. I'm just going to set this back to pure white. And I'll make sure of that by going to this picker where I can adjust the three channels independently. Update the style and close the styles window. I'll switch to another color picker and illustrate how material assignment works. I'll drag in the spectrum to select a color. Notice that as I do that, the color up here is changing because this indicates the current color. When you come on the screen, you'll notice that your cursor is in the form of the paint bucket. All you have to do is click on a surface to assign that color as a material. And this works whether or not you're assigning a texture to a surface or merely a color. I'll choose another hue and then click on a couple of other surfaces. So it's very straightforward. The functionality with groups and components is a bit different. This here is a group. If I click on any one of its surfaces, then all the surfaces in the container inherit the material assigned to the group or component. I'll press the spacebar to activate the selection tool, double click to open the group, choose a different hue, and then click on one particular surface to override the assignment on that surface. So in this way, you can either be more general by assigning the material to the entire container, or you can be specific by assigning the material to an individual face. It's possible to sample a color off of an object and make it the current material so that you can then assign it to other surfaces. That functionality is built into the paint bucket. To see how this works, I'm going to close this group, press B to activate the paint bucket, and hold down the command key. Notice that the cursor changes to the eyedropper symbol. Now I can click on this blue surface and it becomes the current material. I can then click on another surface to assign that color. You can repaint connected faces with the Option key. Here I'll hold down Option while hovering over this surface, and you'll see three squares appear on the cursor. This means that if I click here, the current material will be assigned to all the connected faces that have the same color. So in this case, these two purple faces got recolored. I can do that over here too, but I'd have to enter the group. I'll hold down the Option key, and I can repaint these two purple surfaces. The Shift key allows you to repaint surfaces in a more global way. I'll select a new color, hold down the Shift key over a face, and click. What happened was all of these surfaces in the model that had blue received the new color, except for those which were protected within a modeling context, like a group or component. Those are shielded from this type of behavior. There's one other way to sample colors in SketchUp, and that's with the magnifying glass tool. This allows you to sample a color from anywhere on the screen, and it's the key to sampling colors outside of SketchUp. Suppose, for example, that I have an image open in Photoshop, and I'd like to sample one of its colors and use it in SketchUp. Here's a piece of my personal artwork that I'd like to sample from. I'll switch back to SketchUp and resize the SketchUp window so that I can see some of that artwork on the screen. Then I'll use the magnifying glass tool, come down here and click a color, and it gets sampled and put up here as the current color. I can then use that in SketchUp. The term texture refers to a material that's based on pixels, 
That is, it's made out of an image mapped to the surface. To see how this works, I'll activate the paint bucket and choose from one of these categories in this list. I'll try ground cover. These materials are all image based, that is, based on pixels. I'll select this material and click on the surface. The pixels are mapped to the surface at a certain scale. If you double click on a material, you open that for editing. In the PC, there's a separate Edit tab that allows you to access this information down here. We can set the size of the texture map right in this area. Let's say that these rocks are a bit large. I'm going to change this to be 2 feet by 2 feet, close, and then let me just undo and then reassign the texture at this new scale. And you'll see that it's mapped differently and the texture map repeats. The process of repeating it in both directions is called tiling. And it's beyond the scope of this tutorial to show you how to make a tileable texture map. To do that, right click on a surface and choose Make Unique Texture. You're prompted to select a size for that texture. I'll just click Create Texture. And it looks like nothing has happened, but actually something has. To see that, click on the Home symbol to check out your colors and model. Right now we have three. We have the default colors, we have this texture map which we assigned to the top face, and we have this white one which we just created. To edit that, we need to use a separate program like Photoshop to do that work. And there's actually a setting in SketchUp right here under Applications where you can select a program that you want to use to edit image files. I'm using Photoshop CS4. To jump to that, I can right click, choose Texture, Edit Texture Image, and that will take me immediately over to Photoshop. Here we have it open, and you can see that the aspect ratio is very similar to what we see on the screen in SketchUp. I can then go ahead and make this unique, either by painting or using any of the tools in Photoshop. Save. Here this is a JPEG, so I'll just save it with high compression. OK. And then when I switch back to SketchUp, you'll see that the change has automatically updated. In SketchUp, you have the ability to adjust the texture coordinates, which is the method that is used to map the pixels from the image onto the geometry. To access this, you need to right-click on the surface and choose Texture Position. You enter this special mode where we have these four colorful push pins, and each one does a different thing. Hover over the push pin to read the tooltip. This one allows you to move the texture by dragging the push pin. You can change the origin point of the texture coordinates. This one here allows you to scale and shear the texture by dragging the pin. I can rotate it, I can scale it, and thereby tile it more. And this one here allows you to distort the image. And it's almost like a three dimensional effect where you can rotate the whole plane that this texture is mapped to. This here allows you to scale and rotate as well. So we can get this kind of Hall of Mirrors effect here. And when you're done, you can say Done when you right click. And this all comes from manipulating the texture coordinates.